Hello, everyone. In this session, we will look, continue to look at transforming XML data in SAP ABAP. Uh, in the previous session, uh, we looked at the call transformation and we looked at transformation using the simple transformation. Uh, in this session, uh, we will look at the XSLT transformation. Uh, the XSLT transformation, it offers a high level of flexibility and it's uh, suitable for advanced transformations. Uh, so if you need the simple transactions, uh, then it is advisable to go with the simple transactions. And uh, if you want to go with uh, a little bit of uh, complexity, then you would go with the XSLT transformation. Now the step Steps involved uh, using the XSLT transformation uh, is uh, the very first step is you want to define the XML data. And this is the data that you want to transform. Uh, then what you want to do is you want to create this XSLT program. Uh, in the previous session, we created the simple transformation uh, and there was a graphical way of uh, creating that simple transformation. Uh, but this is not available with the XSLT, so you would have to create it manually. And then you would uh, use the call transformation statement uh, and this is used in ABAP uh, to apply the transformation to XML data. So let's see how this is done. Uh, so if I go to a simple example right here, uh, so this is uh, the example that I have right now. Uh, so I have a uh, XML document right here. Uh, so you see the bookstore. Uh, it has uh, three different books. Uh, so this is my sample XML data and I want to convert this into an internal data, into Internal table in SAP ABAP and the structure of the internal table, I wanted uh, something similar to this. Now, uh, the ID comes from the attribute ID of the book right here, and then the title comes from the title right here, and then the author, uh, it comes from this element right here, uh, but to what you can see is in this uh, book three, we have multiple authors and we have a comma separated list of authors right here. Uh, so there is some complexity involved in this. Uh, so that's why we are going to go use the XSLT transformation uh, instead of the simple transformation. Uh, so let's see how this, uh, how we can uh, go ahead and create the XSLT program. So now we have the XML data. So the second step is to create the uh, XSLT program. Uh, so if I go to my SAP S4 HANA system, so here I can use the transaction S trans, and I have already created this uh, XSLT transformation. Uh, so let me go into the change mode, uh, and I will show you how this is uh, done. Uh, so if I go into my XML document right here, uh, you can see that there are three books right here. And what I want to do is I want to loop through all these three books. Now, in order to loop through all these three books, in XSLT, uh, there is this uh, for each statement. Uh, and uh, uh, you have to select the node, and here we say bookstore slash book. Uh, so bookstore uh, slash book. So this will loop through these three books here. Uh, so that's what we have uh, specified right here, XSLT for each select uh, bookstore slash book. Uh, now, uh, then what I want to do is I want to get the ID. Uh, and the ID is an attribute field. So if we go back here, uh, this ID is an attribute field. Uh, so in order to select the value of the attribute, uh, you have to use the at the rate symbol. Uh, so here we have uh, use the at the rate symbol. And uh, this is another method in XSLT that you should be familiar with. Uh, so this value of, uh, this is uh, going to get the value of that ID. Uh, so these two state uh, methods right here, the for each and the value of uh, is uh, quite extensively used in XSLT. Uh, so the for each is used to loop through all the uh, all the elements and the value of uh, would get the value of the element. In this case, we are getting the ID. So it's uh, looping through the very first book and we are getting the ID and we are storing it in this uh, attribute ID. And the title, uh, so the title is not an attribute. Uh, so you can see there is the title here and uh, we are getting the attribute, uh, we are getting the element value. Uh, so here we don't have to use the at the rate symbol. Uh, so this is uh, the value of is going to now get the uh, title value here. Now, as far as the author is concerned, um, like I said, uh, so here we can simply get the value of uh, this author. Uh, but the problem is uh, we could have multiple authors like in book three. Uh, so 
what we are going to do is we are going to loop through this author. So in this case, there is only one. Uh, so this is uh, this loop is going to run only one time. Uh, but when it comes to book three, uh, this loop is going to run like five times. So that's why we have uh, the author and then we have the XSL for each and then we are uh, looping through the author. Uh, so for book one, there is only one author. So we only get uh, one. Uh, this loop only runs once and we are going to get the value of uh, that author right here. Uh, so that uh, current location uh, and then we are going to use a comma to delimit uh, as a delimiter for the author values. Uh, so this is going to get all the author values. So now we have created this uh, XSLT transformation. Now that we have created the XSLT transformation, our next step, the third step, is to use the call transformation statement. Uh, so let's uh, see how we can put this all together. Uh, so if I go into my code right here, uh, so my very first step uh, is to go ahead and uh, uh, create this XML document. Uh, so here you can see this is my XML document. Uh, so this is uh, similar to the same document that I have right here. Uh, I did not include the year and the price, uh, but otherwise I have included everything uh, that is in this uh, document. So the year and the price I have omitted, uh, but uh, you can add it if you want. Uh, so you have uh, three books right here. And you can see that book three has uh, quite a few authors. So you can see that all the authors are listed here. Uh, so now that we have the uh, XML data, and we also have the transformation created as well. Uh, so now it's time to call the call transformation method. Uh, so in my call transformation method, uh, I provide the name of my XSLT transformation. And uh, this is the same XSLT transformation that I just showed you. So I've uh, already defined this. Uh, and my source uh, is going to be this uh, da uh, XML data. So this LV underscore XML, uh, this is going to contain my XML data and the result uh, is going to be uh, uh, we're going to do uh, bookstore equals LT underscore books uh, so the bookstore uh, so make sure you name this as bookstore uh, LT under books uh, underscore books uh, this is the uh, type of table X ZS book uh, so let me go ahead and show ZS book the structure as well that I have created so here if I go into SC 11 and if I go into my uh, data type and say ZS uh, book, uh, so this is the structure that I, that I had created before. Uh, so if I go into the display mode, you can see that it has the ID, title, and author. And uh, this is the output that we want to have as well. So ID, title, and author. And author has uh, a length of 512, uh, and the title has uh, 255 as the character. Okay, so now that we have this, uh, so if I go into my code right here, uh, so this LT underscore books, uh, this is nothing but an internal table uh, with uh, the structure with the ZS book. And this is uh, the structure that we have. Uh, okay, so this is uh, going to get transformed. This XML document is going to get transformed and is uh, going to be um, in this LT underscore books. And now we are going to just go ahead and display LT underscore books. So if I go ahead and run this, uh, so if I go ahead and run this in my, as a console application, uh, you will see that uh, I have all the uh, three, uh, three records. Uh, so you have the title and then you have the author. And because uh, book three has multiple authors, they're all comma separated here as well. Uh, all the source code is uh, in GitHub, uh, so you can, uh, you can feel free to modify the source code to meet your needs. Thank you very much. Bye.